Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and this week is the start of an exciting uh, longer term project for me and I thought it would be good to document along the way um, in case it's of interest to you. And that is a sheep to sweater project. Um, so for those of you who have been on the channel for a while, I don't talk about our sheep very much um, because we're basically down to a very small flock at this point. Um, they're just pets, they mow the lawn in the summertime, they keep our view open, um, and they're fun to look at and, and you know, it's great to have sheep around, I love it. Um, but we're not a production uh, sheep farm. So, um, and with, by that I mean we're not trying to like make a certain amount of yarn every year or sell a certain amount of products um, in order to be profitable. Um, we've, we've scaled back from our breeding program that we had a few years ago. And so now keeping the sheep uh, is just for fun. Um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do um, in terms of being able to create a finished knitted garment from start to finish. And so this first video is going to be on skirting fleeces. And then we're going to move on to things like washing, preparing fibers, spinning, and so on. Um, so I hope that this is of interest to you. I have to also uh, have another disclaimer in here that I'm not an expert um, on any of these topics. I have certainly read a great deal. I've researched, I've taken workshops, and I've done some practice on some of the steps. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not someone who's been uh, preparing fleeces and, and hand spinning for 30 years. Um, and so I hope that this will be educational in the sense that you'll be able to see a, a novice person um, working their way through a process where, you know, I do have some theory behind me, but I've never actually done this before. Um, and maybe we'll learn something together along the way. Um, if you have an interest in pursuing these things in more detail, I will be um, offering some tips on uh, professional videos series as well as books um, and names of instructors that teach in-person workshops um, so that you can you know delve into these resources more in depth and learn from somebody who is an expert. Um, so we'll get started today like I said uh, with skirting. Um, now of course in the yarn making and garment making process um, the first step is to actually grow the fiber and the, in this case we're going to use wool and so the sheep are really responsible for growing the fiber. Um, Rick and I are responsible for making sure that the sheep have everything they need in order to grow nice fiber that is a nice environment, uh, access to good water, um, nutritional feed and all of those things. Um, and I'll just mention briefly that, that if those things are out of balance, it will actually affect the sheep's fiber. Um, so things like illness, uh, heat stress, poor diet can actually affect the quality of the wool. It can create um, what are called breaks in the fleece, which are weak points in the individual fibers so that the fibers don't hold together or they don't have strength. Um, and so you know that your sheep uh, was treated well if their wool is good quality. Um, and that might be especially comforting if you don't have sheep yourself, but maybe you're going to a flea sale at a fiber festival and you want to know that the, the sheep were treated well. Um, just look at the wool quality and you'll be able to figure out that out really quickly. Um, so skirting is the first human well, I should say the second uh, human step. Of course, the next the next step after growing the wool is getting it off of the sheep. And we hire a professional shearer to do that for us because um, it's more efficient and the shearer is very experienced um, in handling sheep and in particular in using blades to remove fleece safely and efficiently um, without either hurting the sheep or without damaging the fleece. Um, a fleece removed from the sheep incorrectly can be ruined during the shearing process. Um, if someone is, you know, not getting the fleece off all in one go and they're making several passes with the clippers, um, that's what leads to something called second cuts, which is little short fibers, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, and it can really make a mess of your fleece. Um, I do have a couple of... Uh, blog posts, more lengthy blog posts, including one with a video 
where we talk about our sharing day and kind of setting up and preparing for sharing day. So if you're interested, I'll link to that below this video and you can learn more about the sharing process. But assuming that you have grown your fleece and harvested it, um, or perhaps you're buying a fleece at a festival, um, the next step is going to be skirting that fleece. Now, I should say that most fleeces that are available for sale at festivals have already been skirted, but there's a chance that you're going to want to lay that fleece out and have a second skirting uh, yourself, or at least an assessment to make sure that it was skirted properly. Um, skirting refers to picking out any undesirable elements out of your fleece before you wash it. That's the simplest um, explanation I can give you. And undesirable elements include things like um, excessive dirt, uh, matted fleece, um, fleece that has been adulterated with a lot of little bits of hay, or things like burdock burrs, um, any, any kind of stickers or any kind of vegetable uh, matter that's going to get into the fibers and, and create a problem later on in processing. You want to get rid of all of that, that stuff. Um, skirting can also include removing stained wool and it can also remove, uh, include removing foreign objects. Um, and by that I mean things like sheep toenails um, because as long as we have the sheep sitting down on her butt for to be shorn, we're also going to take a moment um, while she's incapacitated and check her feet and make sure those look good um, and trim any toenails that are too long. So in those toenail trimmings, you might get some of those in the fleece um, as you're picking the fleece up off the ground. So you just want to go through and remove all of these things and I'll talk about each one of these um, in more detail. Before you get started with your first skirting experience, I want to mention something about sheep that I feel like a lot of people um, either don't talk about or they try to use euphemisms or talk about it politely or something else. Um, but the truth of the matter is that sheep are not the cleanest animals out there. They will um, poop and then sit in it. Um, they, you know, my sheep, they go in the barn and they poop while they're eating. And then when they're done eating, they'll lay down in their poop and take a nap. Um, so sheep are covered in manure and it may not be obvious at first when you just look at a fleece. Um, it might look relatively clean, you know, it's not going to be as if you had rolled around in dog poop or something like that. Um, because sheep, when they defecate, they make these little pellets, kind of like rabbit pellets. Um, and those are fairly dry and so, um, it's not, it's not a, a kind of a wet kind of a dirt but um, they still are laying in their own poop and that can break down. It, bec it becomes um, part of the ground that they're laying on or it becomes um, sort of a, a fine dust that can then resettle on their fleece. And I, I realize that's not necessarily selling wool um, to you as like a wonderful thing if you have to think about, okay, the sheep's just, you know, been sitting in its own poop. But I do want to put that out there because I think it's important to know that before you skirt your first fleece. Um, I skirt barehanded and I will tell you why, but um, the thing to know is that before you start skirting, you need to make sure that you're wearing um, clothes that you can clean easily. Um, you need to pre be prepared for the fact that your hands are going to get very dirty. And you're going to want to make sure that, you know, if you have long hair, that you've got it tied back so that you're not trying to touch your face or move your hair out of your face while you're skirting. You don't want to touch your face or put your fingers in your mouth or, you know, rub your eyes or something while your hands are this dirty. Um, it is important to skirt barehanded because you get the best feel for the fleece and you, you're, um, you're, you can tell on your skin uh, just by touch, you know, whether... A fleece has um, objects or or problems that your eye may not be able to see as clearly. So that's why it's important to skirt barehanded, but it also is important to use good hygiene practices. And you also don't want to skirt if you have any um, big cuts or open sores on your hands. Um, you know, because you are going to be dealing with dirt and bacteria, and our immune systems can handle that. Um, as long as we have, a, you know, a strong, healthy immune system. Um, but you wouldn't want to introduce sheep manure into like an open wound or something like that. 
Um, the other thing, I, a public service announcement I will say is get your tetanus shot booster. Um, you should be getting one every 10 years, according to what my doctors have told me. And if you are on a farm or you work with manure regularly, you should probably get one every five years or so. So make sure, you know, you're healthy, your skin is in good shape um, before you start your first skirting. Um, I do skirt barehanded. I just make sure that I have a plan for how I'm going to wash my hands afterwards so I'm not touching too many surfaces. Um, and as much as your hands are getting dirty, you're also going to get lanolin on your hands, which is actually a really nice experience. Sheep have this um, amazing secretion that they make that's unlike any other animal. Lanolin is, it's not like the oil that we produce on our skin. It's not like sweat. Um, it's not like the oil glands of other kinds of mammals. It's its own thing. And it's very skin beneficial. It's actually naturally um, antibacterial. So that's one of the reasons I don't worry too much about skirting because uh, I feel like the, the benefits of the lanolin kind of offset the risks associated with handling manure. Um, and, you know, it protects the sheep, of course. The lanolin protects their skin. It makes them waterproof. Makes them able to shed water if they're out in the rain, um, and it protects the wool. So, you know, know that that there is a pleasant side to skirting too. It's not just all about handling a bunch of poopy fleece. Um, but I do want to kind of talk in really honest terms about what you're getting into, so that you're not thinking, "Oh, this is just dirt," or "Why does this smell like this?" Um, you know, it comes from an animal, and it's not the cleanest thing in the world. So as you're working on skirting, um, just keep those things in mind. And if it really bothers you, or if you have a weakened immune system, or some kind of skin condition where you're concerned about getting your hands um, into manure, then you might want to wear thin, uh, like nitrile gloves or something while you skirt. Um, but for most, for most people, you're going to be fine skirting barehanded. Um, just have a plan for washing your hands afterwards. Um, but first, let me talk about another key element to skirting. And that's having a good work surface or skirting table um, to do this work on. Um, skirting, you know, often you're going to be skirting all of your fleeces at one time. Um, it's kind of an easier way to do it if you have a good day for it um, and the weather's cooperating. You can, you should do this outside. And so taking advantage of that window of opportunity by, you know, doing a bunch of fleeces at once is good and in order to support you in that um, to work efficiently and comfortably you're going to want to either procure or build a skirting table. Um, so skirting tables are something that you can buy from farm equipment supply stores and I'll try to find a couple um, and link to those in the show notes for this episode. Um, there is a word of caution though that these these things can be large uh, quite heavy and very expensive. So unless you're a large sheep ranch where you're going to be, you know, skirting hundreds of fleeces on shearing day um, or over multiple shearing days, I typically recommend that people either find, um, adapt, or build their own skirting table. And there's a couple of qualities that you want in a skirting table. Um, the first is a comfortable working height, um, and that would be countertop height. Um, for most people, um, you know, obviously that's going to vary depending on your own height. So you might um, adjust that depending on if you're tall or short. But you want something where it's comfortable to either stand or sit at it for a long time. And I'm trying to modify my advice um, for people who might be um, unable to stand for long periods. So if you need to do this sitting, just make sure that the table is at the right height where you can work um work in that one position for, for a lengthy period of time. Um, and the other thing you might consider as an adaptive technology is if you can uh, build a table that has a rotating top on it so that you don't have to move, um, move around the table to skirt the different sections. Um, if you are able to stand and walk around, then you know that's probably the easiest. It's going to mean your, your skirting table uh, architecture is going to be a little bit easier um, to build because you won't have to have that rotating top on it. Um, the other thing that you want, in addition to having the skirting table at the right height, is that you want it to have some kind of holes or slats 
or some way of allowing uh, material to fall through. Um, and these holes or slats should be maybe half an inch or so um, in width. Obviously you don't want them the spaces so far apart that the fleece itself is going to be falling down, but you do want um, dirt, debris, uh, second cuts, and things like that to be able to fall through. It will make um, the skirting process and, uh, and the washing process a lot easier if, if your table does this. Um, now I have in a pinch um, skirted on a uh, a table with a plastic cover, just a, a regular folding table with a plastic cover. Um, and th so that is a possibility. You know, if you're just getting started, maybe you only have one fleece to work with, or maybe you only buy one fleece a year. Um, you don't necessarily have to build a whole skirting table just for that. But um, skirting on top of a table that has a solid surface does make the job a bit harder and it's not quite as effective. So um, even if you have a friend who has a skirting table, or maybe if you have, you know, if you live in the city um, and you don't have your own flock, maybe your fiber group could get together and build a skirting table together and then take turns using it um, if you don't have a need to, to have your, your own. Um, just a couple of ideas there. Um, my own skirting table is a built out of a clothes drying rack that I got from a big box store. And the clothes drying rack is one of those that folds down flat. Um, it has an A-shaped base to it. And then off of that A-shaped base, it has two wings that fold up and out flat. So um, that's great because it gives you a really big surface area, but then I can fold the whole thing down um, flat and store it. So clothes drying racks don't have the surface that you need. They have the kind of infrastructure that you need or the skeleton. Um, but you need to do something to the top of the clothes drying rack to make sure that it will hold a fleece. And what I did was took hardware cloth um, that had the half inch by half inch squares and I just um, zip tied that onto the uh, vertical bars or the horizontal bars on the flat part of the clothes rack. And I did it in two pieces so that I could still fold the clothes rack down for storage. Um, I also made my hardware cloth extend longer than the length of the table to just give me more surface area to work on. Um, and so the hardware cl cloth is kind of cantilevered over the edge of, of where the um, drying rack ends. And of course that won't support a huge amount of weight, but I did, I did buy the kind of heavy duty hardware cloth that definitely has a bit of structure to it. So as long as I don't weigh it down too much, that hardware cloth does still uh, stand up horizontally and hold the fleece rather than just kind of drooping. Um, so, so be careful in your materials and choose things that have, you know, that, that right combination of strength um, and lightweightness and portability is my advice. Um, so I skirt outside. Um, I have to pick a day that isn't too windy. Um, and that's probably true of most most skirting experiences, although you could skirt in your barn if you have one, or in something like a, an enclosed garage um, if it's a windy day or there's bad weather. I prefer to use natural light and I like to work outside. So I just use our big front porch on our house, um, which is still covered uh, from rain, but um, is open. And um, so, you know, if there's a strong wind, I won't skirt that day. Um, and so what I do is I set up my skirting table outside and then you want to lay your whole fleece out on the table um, as, as one big fleece. Um, depending on the breed of sheep that you're working with and the time of year that they were shorn and whether or not they are shorn once or twice a year, um, your fleece may kind of hold together as one big sheet of wool um, or it might be kind of a loose um, like light and fluffy almost, and kind of not hold together. It might just be a bunch of wool. But um, if you've gathered up your, your fleece and stored it in some kind of bag, what I like to do is just tip the contents of the bag out on the skirting table and then gently kind of um, fluff it and pull it apart and see how it wants to open up on its own and kind of guide it out of the bag and into sort of a semi-flat um, arrangement. 
you want to lay your fleece cut side down so so um, fur side up cut side down as it would have been on the sheep and this is going to allow you to make this first pass over uh, the whole fleece um, you're going to be picking out any big pieces of hay or things like sticks or, or any kind of vegetable matter that you see and you're also going to be discarding some of the wool and that sounds um, like heresy. I know that uh, new shepherds are people who are just skirting fleeces for the first time. Um, this may sound really weird, but you're actually going to discard, I would say on average, probably between 15% up to half of the fleece, depending on the quality of the fleece. Um, and that's for a few reasons. But, but what it comes down to is how much of your time and aggravation are you going to spend um, washing and carting something that's very dirty or very full of, uh, of hay or other debris. And you want to limit the amount of problems that you're introducing to the process um, as you go on to each next step. So skirting is really where you can kind of nip a lot of problems in the bud and um, prevent uh, your fleece from being, I guess, more aggravating to work with in future steps. Um, I hope that makes sense. So the kinds of things you're going to remove are the second cuts, the, the really short pieces of wool where the shearer has clipped one area um, and then maybe gone back over that area to re-shear. And so you're going to get little short, you know, quarter inch, half inch pieces of, of wool. And they'll really stand out. When you start to look at your fleece spread out, you'll be able to pick these things out um, pretty clearly just by looking. Um, you're also going to uh, take away and discard, um, like I said, any foreign objects, any kind of burrs, any kind of uh, toenails, um, anything that was maybe, you know, I've even seen like little bits of metal or things that were, that happened to be on the barn floor during shearing that somebody didn't notice and then it got picked up and put in the bag. Um, those things are also pretty obvious. And you can kind of um, pick up the fleece a little bit and either... Uh, like drop it back onto the skirting board or give it a little bit of a shake and you'll notice that a lot of other um, bits and pieces will start to fall out. Some of the second cart cuts will start, start to fall out through those holes in the table. Um, little bits of manure will start to fall out. Uh, little bits of hay will start to fall out and so that will help you because you don't want to have to go in and actually pick out each of those pieces but you can give that a little bit of a shake. Um, and then the other things you're going to discard are wool from areas where it's either badly matted, very, very dirty, um, or, or full of hay, or some combination of those things. Um, so, you know, obviously, uh, like all mammals, um, sheep pee and poop. They, they, um, and, that, and that can get onto their fleece, and it can either stain it or create, um, you know, very dirty areas of the fleece. So you want to find those areas and you want to pull those off and discard them. Um, if sheep have digestive issues, you'll actually notice that there's thick clumps of manure mixed in with the hay around their butt. Um, those are called tags. So you want to discard those. But you might also get, um, you know, uh, areas along the legs or something that are, that are particularly dirty that way. So you'll throw those away. Um, during the shearing process, in my shearing video, I do talk about discarding the belly wool um, during shearing, and you can use that for mulch or compost. If there is belly wool still in the bag with the fleece, you want to discard that. And you'll, you'll be able to tell belly wool because it will be much shorter than the rest of the fleece. Um, it will usually look kind of uh, distressed or matted. That's from the sheep like laying on their bellies, um, you know, and getting up and getting down and getting a lot of uh, debris and stuff caked into their belly wool. So you'll be able to pick that out. Another area that you can pick out pretty easily is what's called the crow's nest, which is um, just behind the sheep's head. Often when sheep either feed from a feeder or they're free grazing outside, they'll stick their head into an area with food and then some, some hay or some brush or something will fall onto the back of their neck while they're eating. So if, if let's say there's a tasty shrub and they like the look of that, they might bend down and stick their face in that shrub to, to break off a piece and kind of jostle the plant and so some debris might fall on the back of their neck. Same thing if they're eating out of a feeder, 
they're going to stick their face in the feeder and pull out some hay and they might have some hay falling on the back of their neck. So you often get a really dirty spot on the back of the neck filled with hay. It might be quite matted um, or intermixed with hay. You want to you want to get rid of that. Um, and you also want to look at the area along the spine. Now some people will say discard that regardless, um, but I I like to evaluate the wool along the spine and kind of decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether I'm going to keep it or toss it away. But again, that might be an area that has a lot of extra debris, so you can toss that out. Um, so what you're going to mostly be left with is kind of the sides of the sheep um, from about mid-neck mid to about mid-butt. Um, that's going to be your prime areas for the, the wool that you're going to keep. Um, but just use your own judgment and look at each fleece and evaluate it um, individually. Okay, so after you've, uh, you think you're finished um, skirting your fleece, you've gone through, you've looked at the edges, um, you've looked down the spine, you've discarded any uh, really obviously dirty wool, you've picked out any bits of hay or anything like that, you do want to flip the fleece over or roll it over and just do a quick check of the underside as well. Um, in general, the only thing you're going to find on the underside is probably some more second cuts and you can pick those off. Um, and then you can roll up the fleece and put it back into a clean bag ready for washing. Um, now I will say that it's important to uh, have a plan to wash your fleeces pretty soon after you skirt them and not leave them um, unskirted or just skirted for a long period of time because um, the you know the manure and the lanolin and everything like that can start to break down and you can get molding problems. Um, the, the smell of manure and sheep on a fleece will attract pests, it will attract mice, it, will tr it can attract wool moths. So you want to have a plan to get through, through skirting and through washing after you shear as, as soon as you can, within a few weeks, um, rather than letting those dirty fleeces sit for months or even years um, before you attend to them. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this episode, um, fleeces that you buy in a fleece uh, show or sale um, have already been skirted. And so what that means is that if you are a farmer who has fleece that you want to sell, you're going to have to skirt your fleeces um, in order to do that. Um, or if you want to enter them for a competition for judging, you will have to skirt them. Um, and I recommend really going through and skirting all of your fleeces and then kind of narrowing down the best ones, the cleanest ones, the ones with the most consistent length of fiber and that kind of thing and uh, evaluating them against each other and then picking out the ones that are the cleanest and the best prepared and the ones that will present the best. And then follow the guidelines that are um, for the particular sale or competition in terms of how your fleece has to be presented, um, whether how they want it rolled up into, in the bag, what kind of bag they want it in, whether they want it in a burlap bag or um, a clear plastic bag and how it needs to be labeled. Um, each, each organization usually has their own way of, of labeling um, entries for competition or for sale. So just make sure you follow those, those guidelines and rules. So I think that's all my tips for skirting today. Um, if you uh, have sheep or if you regularly buy uh, unskirted fleeces to prepare yourself and you have any other tips, I'd love to hear about them. Feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, tune in next week and we will talk about washing fleece, um, which is something that I've, I've never done before on my own. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research and I'll be doing a bit of practice on this, um, but we'll see how that goes. And I will certainly share uh, my observations with you then. So stay tuned for uh, Sheep to Sweater Part 2 next week. Thanks for joining me and enjoy your week.